Testing, testing, one, two, three, can you hear me? Yes, yes you can, and quite clearly as well. If there's one thing for sure, audio is a critically important part of making videos watchable. If your audio is bad, people are going to stop watching fast. If you can hear what's happening, you can follow the action. Case in point, sports are still broadcast as radio shows both over the air and online the world over. Having the commentator is one of the biggest parts of the broadcast. They beat for beat tell you what is happening in the game, and you mostly get the same information listening as you could watching. It might not be as flashy as a new lens or camera, but investing in the tools for producing high quality audio is a must and can't be overlooked. Now let's get into today's topic, the Sennheiser EWDP Digital UHF Wireless System. Instead of using our trusty Sennheiser MKE 600 shotgun that I've got above me here, we are going to be using the new EWDP system to record the audio for this video. So this will be a good reference overall of the quality of the sound this new transmitter receiver combo produces. The EWDP Digital UHF Wireless System is a single channel receiver, transmitter lav and hand unit combo aimed at the video and filmmaking industry. The main goal of this system is to make setting up and recording audio an easy and fast process for small or one person crews. In essence, show up anywhere, anytime, and have a solid audio recording setup in a matter of moments. Everything about the new mounting options for the on-camera design, speedy sync and control with the Smart Assist app, surprisingly long battery life and external power options point to a solid upgrade over previous options. But the important thing to focus on here is the quality of the sound that you get at the end. All right. Let's get into it. We're going to start with the physical design. The EWDPEK is the first receiver of its kind that can be magnetically stacked. Being able to magnetically stack makes organizing multiple receivers on a camera less cumbersome than in the past. As you can see here, I have the G4 Velcroed to the top of the new receiver. If they had both been EWDPEKs, I wouldn't have had to do this. Attaching the receivers to a camera has never been easier. With the magnetic cheese plate, you can either mount via the cold shoe adapter or you can hard mount it to a cage with the included quarter 20 screws. With all this in mind, it should be a breeze to mount this unit basically in any situation. The receiver features five buttons for changing menu settings on the user-facing OLED display. The I.O. are 3.5 millimeter mic and headphone ports and a USB-C port for external power and battery charging. The two variable angle antenna aren't removable, but they are quite robust, so storing in a normal camera bag shouldn't be of great concern. The belt pack and hand mic are pretty straightforward, both have a mute and sync button, and they are both built pretty solidly. The receiver, belt pack, transmitter, and the hand mic can all be powered by one BA70 lithium ion rechargeable battery, or two AA batteries. USB-C can also charge the BA70 when it's inside the receiver. The option of using USB-C is great because you can pretty much power the receiver indefinitely, and it can incorporate with other external power sources such as V-mount batteries. The BA70 gives a very respectable 7 hours of battery life to the receiver and 12 hours of battery life to the transmitter. Viewing settings and keeping everything connected is important. At a glance, the OLED shows a ton of information, but from the app you can see and change pretty much all the settings from one screen. Easily connect the transmitter to the receiver via the app or by pressing the sync buttons on the units themselves. Once the app, transmitter, and receiver are connected, you can monitor battery life, levels, the channels, and frequency assignments. During my test, the app didn't display a live meter for the levels, which does seem like an obvious thing to have included, but I'm sure they can include this in a future update. If you're just going to be using one unit, I'd say that the app isn't that useful. It's when you have multiple receivers and transmitters that the app can really speed up your setup times. You can also rename and color code each of your sync devices, so being able to figure out which of your talent which mic is on will be even easier. Now this has happened a bunch of times. The talent goes to the bathroom or to craft with their mic unmuted, and everyone hears something that they shouldn't have. Well, with the app or the receiver itself, you can override the mute button on the transmitter, giving you the say as the operator when the mic is and isn't muted. The EWDP also advertises something called smart notifications, which give you alerts about clipping audio, occupied frequencies, and muted or disconnected transmitters. I think it's usually pretty obvious when something is wrong with audio, but knowing what the source of the problem can be is more difficult. So this feature is really handy for doing your troubleshooting. The smart notifications don't link to the Smart Assist app, however, they are only on the OLED. Both can produce better or worse sound based on user error and the environment in which you're recording. In areas where the audio was peaking, sound was recoverable with some post work. Moving on from the exterior, we move on to the tech that gets sound from point A to B. 
The EWDP system features a fully digital UHF wireless microphone system. UHF radio signals don't travel as far, however, they have a wide frequency spectrum making it better suited to going through walls or objects in our everyday lives. You might say, isn't it always analog since the sound will go from the receiver to the camera via cable? Well, no. That part doesn't really have anything to do with the wireless transmission. Since the signal digital wireless transmission sense has been converted into ones and zeros, it's a fixed set of information being sent as opposed to analog wireless transmission, which is a modulating radio wave that can pick up sound artifacts due to other radio frequencies in the area or compansion. Compansion is the process of compression and expansion of the dynamic range of an analog signal. This can cause small audio artifacts in the final recording. Additionally, when too many analog units are in close proximity, it can cause their signals to bleed into one another. Overall, for video production, digital UHF wireless transmission is better suited to busy RF environments and passing through objects. Every set is busy these days, and almost every one of them has a ton of signals of various types flying around, whether they be from the environment or from other equipment on set. We are going to be comparing the new EWDP system against the trustworthy EWG4, which we have used many, many times on this channel in previous videos. If you've been watching our channel, you know I like to read a little bit of Tarkovsky, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. This is uh, under one of the chapters, uh, Music and Noises. Music, of course, came into cinema in the days of the silent movie with the pianist who illustrated what was happening on the screen with a musical accompaniment appropriate to the rhythm and emotional pitch of the visual image. Curiously enough, music has gone on being used in, and then I'll suddenly have a poem, Tarkovsky for you, being used in much the same way up to the present day. Episodes are, so to speak, propped up with a musical accompaniment, which reiterates the main theme in order to heighten its emotional resonance, or sometimes just to make the best of a scene that hasn't worked. We've all been there. Hello everybody, this is Dale Sood reporting for KJHW News next to the beautiful and enigmatic Don Valley River where you can find a host of delicious things uh, for the treasure hunter. As we saw, the police were looking for some treasure, uh, possibly mob related. One will only find out in the news, I guess, tomorrow. Well, what I'm gonna talk about is a little tip and trick for you guys, because I think we're gonna kill two birds with one stone here. I'm gonna educate you, and I'm going to also test this beautiful microphone. So you wanna get people talking like they normally talk, you know, whether it's high-pitched and crazy like me, or otherwise, you gotta paint a scene for them. You are on a pirate ship. Look around the pirate ship, describe to me what you see on the pirate ship. They will go and they will talk about sailors and sails and swabbing decks and tool uh, chests of gold and uh, all sorts of ill-gotten gains. But that's basically it because they're going to keep talking and they're going to, you know, have a more normal conversation that's going to help you get your levels. And that, my friends, is my tech tip of the day. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to get this done pretty quickly because it is going to rain very, very soon. It is going to rain, so let's get this done. Uh, not to waste any time, I'm just gonna get into reading the first page of the 11th chapter of Back to the Future, part three. Chapter 11, Saturday, September 5th, 1885. Doc had shaken Marty awake at first light, and after another of the inventor's hearty breakfast, they had set to work with everything they had from the present blacksmith shop and the future DeLorean. They only had two days, so they had to work fast. Marty spoke into the circa 1985 walkie-talkie he'd brought along in the DeLorean. Testing, testing, one, two, great, Doc, they still work. Doc smiled tautly. All right, Marty, let me show you the entire plan and layout. He waved for Marty to follow him over to the far side of the barn. There on a weathered, rough-hewn table was another of Doc's famous homemade tabletop models, full of wooden blocks, toys, scrap metal, and anything else Doc could scavenge from 1885. Marty realized the model was supposed to be the town and immediate surroundings of Hill Valley in 1885.
Okay, there you go. That's the comparison of the EWDP to the G4. Of the many lav kits I've used up to this point, this system is one of the easiest to use. I do have a few gripes, however. It would be a lot better if a receiver of this size could sync with more than one transmitter. I'm not sure if that can be something fixed through firmware or if it's something that they're waiting to release in a future model. Because there is enough real estate on the OLED for you to see two sets of levels. Another thing is the design of the receiver would also make it awkward to put in a field mixer bag. And since the controls are on the bottom, technically, if you were to face it upright, that would put all those controls completely inside the bag. But I guess that's another use for the app. EWDP really is intended to be used as an on-camera audio kit. And I really dig it for this. It's sleek and it works well. It's a bit large on mirrorless systems, but it does feel a lot better on larger camera platforms. Well, that's all I have to say about the Sennheiser EWDP digital UHF wireless system for now. To see all of the Sennheiser and audio products we offer, head to viztech.ca. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.